Hey everyone, welcome back to the Golf House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny and today is Fat Tuesday. So we are celebrating with some gumbo. I'm gonna make chicken and sausage gumbo and I'm gonna bring you along to show you how I do it. There might be a few extras along the way. Let's get started. First thing I've done is take five large chicken breasts and when they were semi-frozen, I cut them. That way they're a little bit easier to cut. So they are now just laying on the tray and they're in one and a half inch pieces. Next thing we're gonna do is make our seasoning, super easy seasoning. I am going to put um, three quarters of a teaspoon of onion powder. I am gonna put a half a teaspoon of uh, Himalayan pink salt. I'm putting one whole teaspoon of garlic powder in here. I am putting a half a teaspoon of cayenne. And I want a half a teaspoon of pepper. And I'm just going to pour it out of my shaker. And a half a teaspoon of paprika. I'm going to get this all stirred together. Okay, if you want more cayenne pepper to make it hotter, you can totally do that. My mother-in-law doesn't like really spicy food, so I have to kind of be careful, but I am going to, oh, make sure you can see first. I am going to sprinkle this over all the raw chicken. And then I'm getting my hands in, stir it up. This is an important step because you want your chicken to have flavor. And of course, we like garlic, so I always add lots of garlic. So, you know, if you don't like garlic, you can leave the garlic out or put less in it. Um, if you don't like spice, leave out the cayenne. Um, if you like it more spicy, put more in. You know, kind of adjust it to your how you like it at your house. There's no hard and fast rules here, and everybody makes gumbo differently. I've had a lot of quick gumbo that was just as good as an all-day gumbo, let me tell you. So, no hard and fast rules. I'm going to let this sit for 30 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to take my frozen okra. I've got frozen. I'm going to take a bag of that out of the freezer and let it come to room temperature out here, and I'm going to start chopping the veg. All right, here's where I'm at. I have one large green bell pepper chopped. I have about a cup of celery chopped and that is about five medium stalks. And then I have one extra large onion chopped. In here I've got about a cup, maybe a cup and a quarter of all purpose flour. We need to start frying. This is about three quarters cup of lard. So I've got that heating up. I'm gonna use this bowl and this to catch the flour in here. We're gonna use the extra flour that spills out that we shake off. We don't want a bunch extra in our pan right this second. So, got my bag here. I'm gonna throw in the first batch of chicken pieces. Okay, that's probably good. I'm going to seal this just for a sec. Shake them around. And then... I'm going to pull them out and put them right in here. But I want to keep all my extra flour for the roux. Over here is where I'm dropping them in. Don't crowd your pan. These are going to cook in the broth so you don't have to cook them all the way. We're just going to give them a good flash fry. Okay. 
They just need a couple minutes, so I'm going to start pulling them out. I'm just going to pop them into a bowl because I want to save the oil. Now, if you don't use lard, you don't have lard, can't get a hold of lard, then you can use just regular vegetable oil or shortening, whatever you use at your house. Again, cooking to me isn't about going out and buying a whole bunch of special ingredients. It's, you know, use what you have, what you can get a hold of, that kind of thing. Okay. Next batch going in. I'm going to continue to get these done. When I've got all my chicken fried up, we will be back for the next step. My chicken is all fried up there in this pot. I am now going to take the flour that I shook off the chicken and put that in the pan. We're going to make the roux. So I've turned my heat down to more of a medium low. And now we cook. <laughs> I'm just going to let this cook and let it brown. Now, if you're going to make this more authentic, you're going to cook it for a heck of a lot longer. Um, we're going to stick to like maybe 30 minutes. 45 tops, but I'm trying to get this done, so uh, <laughs> so we're going to do it a little bit quicker, but you're going to want to take your time cooking your roux. So give yourself extra time. I have run out of time today. So I'm going to cook until it's a little bit darker. I'll check back in with you in about 20, 30 minutes. Okay, it has been 30 minutes and my roux is has gotten a lot darker <laughs> so I am ready to start adding in my other stuff I'm gonna put in all my veg whoa I'm just gonna add it right into this and actually I'm gonna turn my heat off at this point I kind of want to take it off the heat, so remove my chicken. I'm going to pull it off the heat and stir it in. Turning all my burgers on. <laughs> I have got some garlic. I'm going to start putting that in. I'm going to put in, let's see, three. I'm putting in five cloves of garlic. So, if gumbo is something that you grew up with, you have your own recipe or your secret family recipe, you know, gumbo that you've made, you love, and I'm not making it the way you're used to. <laughs> Sorry. This is just my version of it. It may not be authentic, but it works for this household. And if you um, want to make gumbo, you know what? You can, and you can make it comfortable for your house. my garlic in. Okay, my veg is starting to soften up a little bit. 
Here's another thing that I'm probably doing differently than you would. I'm using my home canned turkey stock. Um, I have some chicken stock, but not as much as turkey stock. And the turkey stock has such good flavor. Oh my gosh, I love the turkey stock. So I'm gonna use it. And I've got this back on a medium, medium high heat. Whoa. And my last one. Okay. So there is all my turkey stock. I'm gonna bring this up to high because I wanna start it to a bowl and then I'll turn it down. Okay, I'm gonna wait for this to come back up to a boil before I start adding the rest of my stuff. Okay, this is not quite to a boil yet, but you know, I'm impatient. <laughs> I have here all of my chicken and my sausage and this is just um kielbasa normally i use andouille but andouille is spicy and some people don't like spice and so <laughs> uh, this one is getting kielbasa and i've got about 28 ounces of kielbasa um, but you can use a couple pounds of Andouille, or you can use kielbasa, whatever you want. But I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna get all this stuff in carefully. I'm trying really hard not to make a mess. As soon as it comes to a boil, I'm gonna turn it down um, and then put it on a simmer. And I'm gonna simmer it until we're ready to eat dinner. So it'll probably simmer three hours. And at this point, if you want to add extra seasoning and make it more spicy, add gumbo filet or um, Cajun seasoning. You can totes do that. I'm going to bring out the Tony's Cajun seasoning. And I've got some Slap Yo Mama also. And I'm just going to put those on the table and let everybody season their own because um, of the spice thing. So there you go. Okay, last little bit. So there is a way to make gumbo not spicy if you're one of the people that don't like the spice. What does Linda call them? A lippy, wimpy lip, <laughs> wimpy lip, <laughs> something like that. It's so, so funny. All right, I am gonna drop my okra in. It's almost defrosted. Oop, oop, oh, there was an end there. Where is it? An okra tip. I would have just taken that out, but oh well. Oh well. Okay, bring into a boil and then I'm going to cover and let it simmer until we're ready to eat. In the meantime, we're going to make some deviled eggs. The ham salad that I canned, I will link it, the video in the description box below. This is going into our deviled eggs. So I've opened this and I have 12 eggs that I've boiled. Okay, here is my ham salad. And you know what I did? I put it in a pan and I um, cooked it on high to reduce the liquid in it. And um, I wanted to save the flavor. I didn't really want to drain it. So anywho, I just did that. And then I kind of mashed it up a little bit and cooled it down. I'm ready to put my egg yolks in. Okay, I've got my egg yolks in here and I'm just gonna mash them right into the ham salad. That's okay, it's done. Now, if you haven't canned ham salad, you can use that devil wood, devil wood, <laughs> underwood deviled ham, that, the little can. I buy those too, I love them, but that's what you would use in place of this. And then, 
you would add your some sweet pickles, some onions, a little bit of sugar, vinegar, mustard. There's no mayo in these. So I'm going to, when I get done, I'm sure the salt is there. I won't have to add salt, but I will probably have to add a little bit of sugar. But when we can these, we can them with the onion and the pickle in there already. Now that I've got that mashed up, I'm going to go ahead and add some hot sauce. I'm going to add a few dashes of hot sauce to this. You can skip the hot sauce. You don't like the hot sauce. You can use Tabasco, Frank's, whatever kind of hot sauce you like. And I'm going to put a little bit more mustard in here. And I'm using the plain old yellow stuff. So that was probably half a teaspoon. And then we'll see how it tastes. You can also do this in the food processor. Might be easier than what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna taste this and see what else I need to add. Ooh, I love that with the ham. <laughs> I think I like it even better with the home canned versus the Underwood, and I love the Underwood deviled ham. Wow, that's good. Okay. I'm going to add a smidge of sugar to this. Just because I think it needs it, but if you are keto and you are not doing that, then leave it out. Okay. Splash more vinegar. Okay. Our Cajun deviled eggs are done. I just sprinkled paprika on them and I put a slice of green olive on them and I would, didn't put them in a um, bag and pipe them in like I probably should have. It would have been so much prettier, but oh well. One note on this, I added vinegar, apple cider vinegar to moisten it a little bit. It was too much because it has vinegar in the ham salads. If you're using the devil underwood, the underwood deviled ham, then you're going to need to add about a half a teaspoon of vinegar to the mixture. But other than that, if you need to moisten it, you can put some water in. You definitely don't want to change the flavor of the ham. It's so good. Our gumbo is done simmering, and it's nice and thick. Oh, man, it smells delicious. You can see my green peppers. My okra is kind of faded in a little bit. I should have waited to put that in, but um, or put more in. I love okra. <laughs> anyway, we are ready to eat. Let's dish, dish some of this up. There's my rice. I'm actually going to put two scoops of rice in. Now, if you are doing a low carb, you can skip the rice. And then we have a little bit of a slap your mama. Whoa. Delicious. You my mom out of it. <laughs> mom, you all right? Hopefully you try this easy recipe for yourself. All right. That's all there is to gumbo. I bet you thought it would be harder than this. Super easy, a little time consuming with a couple extra steps, but definitely worth it. I hope you're having a fabulous Fat Tuesday if you're celebrating. And if you've missed Fat Tuesday, you can go ahead and make this gumbo any time of year. It's delicious. And you can make the deviled eggs for any time of year, any event, any holiday, anything. Super delicious, especially if you've canned up some of that ham salad. And the king's cake, I will put the video in the description box below when I made it last year. Um, super delicious. It's like a big cinnamon roll with some lemon frosting. It's delicious. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot, and I sure do appreciate your support. If you haven't started following me on Instagram yet, you should. At JennyGoff18, I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog for all of my recipes, including the gumbo, at JennyGoff.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.